Hello there, today I'm struggling a little bit for inspiration. And if you're anything like me, I know you will have had days like that as well. Every time that happens to me, and it does happen quite regularly, I have a few tactics that I like to employ. I really want to share them with you today as I kind of work my way through that process. I've come to the Durdle Door area in Dorset and the sea is a fantastic colour, so I'm looking forward to capturing some of that as well, but I really do hope that you will come with me. Before we get into this today though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website or an online store, then make your next move with Squarespace. I'm feeling a little bit groggy today because last night was the Light and Land Christmas do, so I drank a lot more than I'd been planning, but it's now nice to be out and about soaking up some of that fresh air, maybe a little bit, little bit because of my hangover. I'm not particularly inspired by this location, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna take an image because I find one way to get around it is to get in close, pull out something that's within that landscape and doing that with your 72-200 lens is a really good way to do that. So I'm not sure this shot is gonna work by any means, but I've got the tripod up right up high on the neck like this, so I can get a bit of a higher perspective and shoot down that hill a little bit more because you're not supposed to cross this rope, so I'm going to respect those rules, as irritating as it is for me. There's a sort of little formation of rocks down there that I find really interesting. It almost forms like a bit of a, a face, almost, with a couple of eyes and a mouth. You then have some light coming through, essentially what are the eyes, from in the distance there, and that's just casting really interesting tones and shapes onto the water. And that water is a beautiful sort of turquoise blue colour. And as the waves are coming through, they're swirling around and creating some really inter interesting shapes. So it's not a big wide vista, but something a bit closer, more like a portrait, especially because of that sort of face facial feature there and I'm just exposing for a little longer just to get a bit of smoothness in that water as well. And it's, gonna, it's about the contrast of the colors, I think, as much as anything. Settings wise, we're looking at F16, and that's giving me, able to give me a, about half a second, ISO 100, just waiting for the right moment. Bit of swirling water, there we go, two second timer. And yeah, I'm not sure if that's gonna work, but it's the only thing that's sort of piquing my interest at the moment in this position. Right, so that process of creating those three separate images has just lifted my mood. Just getting a couple of shots that are actually really quite nice, but not great, but nice, has lifted me. It's given me a massive boost and I've just finished exposing another shot because I'm now, have inspired myself to some extent and let this area inspire me as well. And as the cloud and the sky has become more interesting, that's just further exaggerated that feeling. So I've got another shot set up here with this beautiful bay down below me. And it's quite an interesting shape on its own if you can sort of see over the camera there. But that's not what I'm going for. I'm more focusing on that big rock in the middle of the sea there, some of that sea washing over it. And it just makes a nice line through an image up to the cliffs in the distance. And it's gonna be a long exposure because the color of that water is just fantastic. And I wanna make this image all about that. Get a little bit of movement in these clouds as well, give it that nice ethereal feel that I love so much from long exposure photography. I'm at F8. I'm in bulb mode, I'm at ISO 100, I've got a 1 minute 42 exposure dialed in with, if I come around this way, with this 10 stop filter. I've gone down to a square crop because this cliff here, I do not want that in the image and I don't want the other side of the bay in the shot either, so I've come down to that square crop and that's going to work really nicely for me. I'm focused on the rock in the middle, I'm ready to shoot, 2 second timer, and then 1 minute 42, and we can see what that looks like. <laughs> I'm loving this now. I've turned it round. <laughs> I was feeling low before, now I'm feeling great. Always part of the process for me in overcoming that lack of inspiration or motivation is to get away from the car. Getting in and out of the car to do photography can, can become demoralizing maybe, or your expectations might raise if you're expecting to park the car, get out and get a great shot. Not always realistic, but getting away from the car, getting some exercise, doing a walk, it always 
seems to pick me up. You get that natural boost from getting your heart rate going a bit. And it also affects your mind because you seem to become more creative, you have more inspiring thoughts, just serves to benefit your day or your photography. Yeah, it just, it just does. I'm convinced of it, even when it's hard. Oh, it's harder than it looks walking on that sand. Another thing to do if you are lacking inspiration is to keep it simple and visit an iconic site just like this here at Durdle Door. Now I'm here. That thing is particularly inspiring. It's a fantastic thing, Durdle Door. Really impressive. The beach is really steep, so the waves are actually quite severe and quite loud, as well as you can probably hear. For the shots, I have the circular polarizer and a six-stop filter. Now, what the six-stop filter is letting me do is just to smooth that water out a little bit. It's giving me an exposure time of about 13 seconds, which is great because there isn't really any wind today, so in that 13 seconds, I'm hardly gonna see any movement in the clouds. So the clouds are gonna be nice and sort of sharp because they're quite interesting. There's nice detail in there, but I'm gonna get a nice smooth bit of water. For the composition, what I'm doing is using the curvature of the shoreline, basically. It's where the water is coming in, foaming up. I want that to be the leading line into my image that takes you round towards Durdle Door. Now, in order to do that, that's where the long exposure also helps but I've got to get the timing right because I essentially want the, the wave or the foam to come out the bottom corner of the image. So I need to wait for that shoreline to froth a bit more, a bigger wave to come in and then get the timing right. And so far I haven't done that. The sun is now pushing through, a little bit more light, which is nice as well. The color of the water is just fantastic. Absolutely beautiful. I initially planned for this to be a black and white shot, but with the colour of that water, I'm now not sure. And the detail in the sky as well is really nice. There's, there's a lot of blue tones in that sky. There's a good wave coming in now. Two second timer. Just wait for 15 seconds, but it's absolutely beautiful here. Look at those cliffs behind me as well. Just absolutely fantastic. Let's have a look at that. And that's just beautiful. It's an absolutely classic scene. If you've not seen this photograph before, then I'm not quite sure where you've been, but Turtle Door, fantastic. And I'm glad I've now got an image of it. So one last thing to do when you are lacking in inspiration is to print your work. I've been talking about it with a few fellow photographers over the last few days, but printing is just so, so special. And when you get that piece of work produced in your hands and we're thinking about the print when we're here in the field, it's just a fantastic thing when you, that final piece of work comes to life. You get to hold it, you get to look at it. And it's just about you and that the, the link between the visualization that you had at the start and that final print. What we do with all this stuff in the middle, I've said before, doesn't really matter. How you do it doesn't really matter. But yeah, so we're gonna go back and do that. We're gonna go back to the studio, then we'll produce that final print and be interested to see if I think black and white or color is best. So I will see you after a five and a half hour drive back up north. So. I will save you from that uh, boring moment. Right, that last shot, that last slow motion shot there, it cost me water right up to my knees. It went inside my boots and I spent the rest of the day with very wet feet. It did sound a little bit like it was the camera that went in and thankfully on this occasion, that was not the case. It was just wet feet. So I just want to talk about printing very briefly. And we're going to print that picture of Durdle Door in a second, but more so on those uh, three at the beginning because each of those individual shots, I don't think are anything particularly special. 
but it's just a great way to document a scene when you might not necessarily have that big vista available. A little bit like a wedding, uh, when we see those little detailed shots of the champagne and the food, just that those little links that tie the whole story together. And that's particularly the case when I have printed them out because I think they look really quite nice. I'm gonna just set them up here for you. Just nice little detail shots with that beautiful water, that beautiful color of that rock. And I'm just really happy with them as a kind of little series of pictures that help tell the story of that position where I didn't have an obvious shot. You can do it with macro photography when you get in on a little leaf. You can use the 70 to do 100 like I do. It just expands your creative possibilities and can push the inspiration like it did for me when I wasn't particularly feeling it at first. But I'm gonna now print the Durdle Door picture because I'm excited to see that. I think it's gonna be great. I'm not gonna go through the editing or the full print. If you're interested in that type of thing, that's all there for you on the Raw Room, which you can now get a seven day free trial for, so you can check that out. I'll probably put the editing video of this up as well. So go ahead and give that a try. So now let's get that picture printed. and We can take a look. Right, that's now done. I'll show you that in a second, but first I just want to remind you that this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace lets you build a website really easily. They've got some beautiful templates that you can have a website up and running in 10 minutes, essentially. Put some of your pictures on that you've already got. It'll be give you a great push into 2020 and you can put your work out there for everybody to enjoy. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself and Squarespace is great because it just will grow with you as well. So go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And then if you like what you've created, you can put the offer code FIRSTMAN in to get 10% off your first purchase. Right, let's take a look at the print. It's just down here. And this is the final print. I'm just absolutely thrilled with that. I love the tones as well. I decided to do it on, on matte paper, which gives you that nice sort of cotton rag feel to the paper. There's less reflections. And because of the sort of pastel colors that are in this picture, it just works really well. And I'm really happy with that. It's a classic shot. I'm now happy that I've got that. And it was just an overall great experience. I found that inspiration again, and I'm so happy I put in that little bit of extra effort. 